Hi, my scholars. Welcome to today's class on scapular anastomosis. The scapular anastomosis is a very important arterial network, and you'll be tested on it in your exams. So let's go into the topic together. Thank you very much. All right. So what is an anastomosis? An anastomosis is defined as a network of vessels. It could be a network of arteries. In that case, you call it an arterial anastomosis. It could be a network of veins. In that case, you call it a venous anastomosis. And it could be between arteries and veins. You call it an arterovenous anastomosis. So the scapular anastomosis is purely an arterial anastomosis. And that gives us a definition. So the scapular anastomosis is an arterial anastomosis. Arterial anastomosis. around the scapula. So it's a network of arteries around the scapula. Network of arteries around the scapula. Now the scapula is a triangular thin plate of bone you find at the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage. It has a coastal surface and a dosal surface. The dosal surface has a bony projection known as the spine of the scapula. And the scapula has superior border, a lateral border, and the medial border. It equally has an apex that corresponds to the inferior angle of the scapula. And that is what we are talking about here. So there's a rich arterial network within the scapula. And that anastomosis is called the scapular anastomosis. So what are the participating arteries? So it's very easy to remember the participating arteries. And it's between the first part of subclavian artery, first part of subclavian artery, and the third part of axillary artery. So we should remember the arterial tree of the upper limb. So we have the subclavian artery, which can take its origin either from the brachiocephalic trunk or from the arch of the aorta. And the subclavian artery will continue as the axillary artery at the outer border of the first rib. And the axillary artery will continue as the brachial artery at the lower border of the teres major. And the brachial artery will bifurcate at the level of the neck of the radius into a smaller terminal branch called the radial artery and the larger terminal branch called the honor artery. So the arteries involved the first part of the subclavian and the third part of the axillary. Now those arteries can be remembered with a mnemonic. And that mnemonic is some arteries can deeply trust six people. So some arteries can deeply trust six now, some represents the suprascapular artery. So, some arteries represent the suprascapular artery. As the name implies, it passes above the superior border of the scapula and is an artery. So, can is the circumflex scapular artery. Circumflex scapular artery. So the circumflex scapular artery is a large branch that is coming off from the subscapular artery. So and then we have deeply. So deeply represent the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. It's called the deep branch. of transverse cervical artery. So that's the meaning of deeply. So trust six people. So these are the acromial branches. So trust means acromial branch, acromial branch of thoraco acromia artery. So the T here represents thoracoacromial artery. 
Then this six represents suprascapular artery. So we have the acromial branch of the suprascapular artery. And then people represent the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So you call it the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. All right. So some arteries can deeply trust six people. Gives you the name of the arteries that are involved in the scapular anastomosis. So the first three arteries here are actually the arteries that are anastomosing within the body of the scapula. And the last three arteries here, they give rise to acromial branches that anastomose at the acromial process of the scapula. So what are the sites of scapular anastomosis? So there are two sites. So we have the anastomosis around the body of scapula and then the anastomosis around the acromial process. So the acromion or the acromial process of the scapula. And let us locate those sites. So in order for us to remember those sites, we need to look at this diagram. The diagram shows the dosal surface of the scapula. The most prominent feature in the dosal surface of the scapula is the spine of the scapula or the spinous process. So it has a root, it has a crest, and it falls out laterally as the acromial process. And this spine of the scapula divides the scapula into two unequal fossae. This fossa above the spine is called the supraspinous fossa. The supraspinous fossa. And this larger fossa that is below the spine of the scapula, the dosa surface, is called the infraspinous fossa. Infra spinous fossa. The fossa is a depression. Why these points of division, which correspond to this bony projection, is called the spinous process of the scapula. All right. So within the body of the scapula, we are referring to the dosal surface of the scapula, mainly at the infraspinous fossa. There are three arteries that are anastomosed in there. And the mnemonic is some arteries can deeply. Some is the suprascapular artery. In order to trace the suprascapular artery, we need to discuss the subclavian artery. So the subclavian artery corresponds to this artery here. It's called the subclavian artery. But like I said, only the first part of subclavian artery contributes to the scapular anastomosis. So this is first part of subclavian artery. There's a big arterial trunk that arises from the first part of the subclavian artery. And that arterial trunk is called the tyrocervical trunk. So the tyrocervical trunk. Tyrocervical trunk. So this is the tyrocervical trunk. So from the tyrocervical trunk, you have two major arteries that will be given off and participate in anastomosis around the scapula. And those two arteries are, see this first artery here? It's called the transverse cervical artery. So this artery is the transverse cervical artery. So that is the TCA, the transverse cervical artery. And the transverse cervical artery is given off from the tyrocervical trunk. And after a short course, it bifurcates into a deep branch and a superficial branch. So this branch right here is called the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery. So you call it the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery. Why this other one here that continues down is called the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. All right. So 
The transverse cervical artery arises from the tyrocervical trunk, which is taking origin from the first part of the subclavian artery, and after a short cut, it bifurcates into two, the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery and the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. So the first artery involved in this anastomosis is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. So it courses along the upper median corner of the scapula, and then it descends along the media border of the scapula, it descends and gives rise to some branches. Okay, those branches include those that will go to the infraspinous fossa and those branches that are going to anastomose with the intercostal arteries. So the first branch is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. All right. So the second artery that is involved in scapular anastomosis is called the suprascapular artery. So this artery right here, the bed as number two is the suprascapular artery. So this artery is the suprascapular artery. The suprascapular artery is also taking origin from the tyrocervical trunk. And the tyrocervical trunk arises from the first part of the subclavian artery. The suprascapular artery is so called because it passes above the superior border of the scapula. So supra means superior. And then it passes through the suprascapular notch. After passing through the suprascapular notch, it then passes through the spinoglenoid notch to enter the infraspinous fossa. And that is the course of the suprascapular artery. So once the suprascapular artery gets to this fossa within the dosal surface of the body of scapula, it is going to anastomose with other arteries. All right, so that gives us the second artery. And the third artery that is involved in the anastomosis around the body of the scapula is this artery right here. So this artery is given off by the third parts of the axillary artery. So this is the axillary artery, particularly which part? The third part of axillary artery. Now, the third part of the axillary artery gave rise to three branches, and we all know that. So, this artery is called the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So, it passes posterior. To the surgical neck of humerus. So it winds posterior around the surgical neck of humerus. This artery here is known as the anterior circumflex humeral artery. So it winds anterior to the surgical neck. Anterior circumflex humeral artery. And this third branch here is the largest branch coming off from the third part of the axillary artery. And that artery is called the subscapular artery. Subscapular artery. All right. But with respect to the anastomosis around the body of the scapula, we are only interested in the subscapular artery. So the subscapular artery is the largest branch from the third part of the axillary artery, and it courses along the lateral border of the scapula. So as it passes along the lateral border of the scapula, it gives off a branch. And that artery is called the circumflex branch of the subscapular artery. So this artery is known as the circumflex. The circumflex branch of the subscapular artery. So the circumflex branch of the subscapular artery anastomosis with the suprascapular artery at the infraspinous fossa. And that is very, very important. Why the other terminal part of the subscapular artery is going to anastomose with the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery at the inferior angle. So at the inferior angle, we have 
the main stem of the subscapular artery and astomosis with the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. And that is how it. So that is the anastomosis occurring around the body of the scapula. Three arteries are involved. Some arteries, that's suprascapular artery, then second flex branch of the subscapular artery. Deeply is the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. And we are left with three arteries. Now, those three arteries are anastomosis around the acromion. So this expanded projection that fans out from the lateral aspect of the spine of the scapula is called the acromion. You can call it the acromion or you call it the acromia process. So the arteries that were kind enough to give branches to the acromion, those arteries will be called the acromia branches of the corresponding arteries. And they are coming from the suprascapular artery, one is coming from the posterior circumflex humeral artery, and the other is coming from the thoracoacromia artery. So all we just have to do is to add acromia branches off, and we are done with that. So and those arteries, we represented them with this mnemonic that says, trust six people. Trust is thoracoacromia artery, six is suprascapular artery, and people is posterior circumflex humeral artery. So we need to trace those arteries and then come up with their various acromial branches. All right. So the first artery here is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. So the posterior circumflex humeral artery is a branch from the third part of the axillary artery, and it gave off an artery. So this artery that goes to the acromion will be called the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Acromial branch of posterior circumflex humeral artery. And that is this artery right here. So the second artery is from the thyro, from the thoracoacromial artery. So this artery is called the thoracoacromial artery. It is a branch of the axillary artery as well. So the thoracoacromial artery usually ends by giving rise to four branches. Remember that's A, B, C, D. The first branch is the acromial branch, that is A. B means breast, the branch to the breast, or I call it the pectoral branch. Then C represents clavicular branch. Then D is the branch to the deltoid. So those are the branches of the thoracoacromial artery. So the first artery given off is the acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery. So this artery right here is the acromial branch of thoracoacromial artery. And that artery moves down to the acromion for this point of communion or anastomosis. And the last artery that is involved is the suprascapular artery. Now the suprascapular artery, before it passes through the suprascapular notch, it gives us an artery that also goes to the acromion. And that artery will be called the acromial branch of the suprascapular artery. So the anastomosis around the acromion is formed by acromial branch of posterior circumflex humeral artery, acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery, and the acromial branch of the suprascapular artery. And that is the network right there. So that is anastomosis around the acromion. This is anastomosis around the body of the scapula. All right. So the significance of the scapular anastomosis is that once there is an occlusion of the subclavian artery within the first part of the subclavian artery or within the third part of the axillary artery, okay, blood can still flow through these channels and perfuse the tissues as well as the muscles within this region. So it serves as an important source of collateral circulation. And that is the clinical significance. Collateral circulation. That is what is called the scapular anastomosis. And that is the clinical significance. All right, my scholars have been able to exhaust the scapular anastomosis in there to look at the definition, the points of anastomosis, the arteries involved in the anastomosis, the sites of anastomosis, and don't forget, some arteries can deeply trust six people. Thank you very much. Until next time.